of standard 70 and today I am going to explain about RAM. RAM, RAM the SS memory. RAM is invented by Robert DeMarle in 1967. RAM is a type of computer hardware that is used to store the information and then process that information. The processing speed of RAM is much faster than a hard disk. But RAM is a volatile device which means when a computer system is shut down, all the information stored is wiped out from RAM. Whereas hard disk is non-volatile which means it stores the data permanently in it. The data can be easily stored in RAM and can be easily fetched from RAM. The fetch process of data is very fast in RAM. Compared to hard disk, there are two types of RAM. SRAM, Statistic Random Access Memory and DRAM, Dynamic Random Access Memory. The use of SRAM is in cache memory of CPU and the DRAM is mostly used in modern computers. Thank you. All myself, Ananya Kumar, Class 7C. I am here to explain you about hard disk. So come, let us know what is a hard disk. Hard disk. A hard disk drive. Hard disk. Hard drive or fixed disk is an electromechanical data storage device that use magnetic storage to store and retrieve digital data using one or more. Rectal rapidly rotating platters coated with magnetic material. So I think that all of you have understood what is a hard disk. So come, let us know about the parts of the hard disk which are stored here. So what is this? This is a disk and this part is reach right heads. And this is platter and this part is arm and this is favorite and this is voice whole motor. So of this topic we came in the end of the video. Thank you. Presentation by Ananya Kumar. I, Shasman of class 70 is going to explain a topic for you and that is motherboard. Now what is motherboard? Motherboard is one of the most important part of internal hardware. Sometimes question arises that now what is internal hardware? Internal hardware are the parts of computer which are physically installed within a computer. I mean to say that the parts of computer which are inside the com inside the computer are known as internal hardware. In motherboard, I'm especially talking about the cabinet. And about cabinet, the big box-like structure, which we refer as CPU, is not the CPU, it is known as cabinet. And there are many parts in the internal hardware. And one of them, the most important is mother. It has all the circuits designed on it, designed on it. Now, have you ever wondered that why a motherboard is named so? I mean to say like that why it is not not say means it is not say something else like planner board means it has many names. I'm trying to say main board, planner board, circuit board, it has many names, etc. But I'm telling it why the word mother has been given to it. The mother word is very closely related to our life. In our life, mother is one of the mother is the base of the family on her only the family is building up. And she combines all the members of family together. Without her, a uh, family is just like nothing. In the same way, motherboard is also the base of the computer system. And without it, the computer is just like a hollow. And it combines and connects all the crucial parts of the computer. Some of the important parts that it connects are like CPU, the memory slots, the input and output devices. In input and output devices, I mean to say that keyboard, mouse, printer, etc. are connected with the wire. 
we see that it is connected to the cabinet but in cabinet the special part when it is specially connected to the motherboard now many major parts of the components uh, of the computer which are in the motherboard are as the computer's microprocessor the computer's memory the basic input output system that known as bios is also in it then the complementary metal oxide semiconductor battery which we know as semus battery is also inserted in it then the buses that is also known as pci slots are present in it then the memory sorry then the chipset is also there now let's move on to the picture now this is the picture of motherboard and i have written here io that means in input and output panel connectors here that i was talking about that the wires are connected here are the wires connected in the motherboard now pci express slot this black one is known as pci express slot the full form of pci is peripheral component interconnect now the front audio heater this blue chip is known as front audio sorry yellow chip is known as front audio heater now pci slots I was talking about the buses. Here are th three PCA slots, uh, also known as buses. Now the CMOS battery. This one is known as CMOS battery. The full form of CMOS I have told you before. That is complementary metal oxide semiconductor. South bridge. This one is known as the South bridge. It is also referred as CPU. Now the PCI Express slot. This is known as PCI Express slot. Here are the memory slots. This is known as memory slots. The, here the RAM is inserted inside it. Now, here not with chipset. I was talking about chipset. That it is also very important in motherboard. It also plays an important role in motherboard. Like in motherboard, chips are also defaulted. I mean, are default set it. Or sometimes we also set it. I Means we also insert it. So. This is known as the CPU shortcut. It's the CPU shortcut, not the CPU. Here, the South Bridge is known as CPU, but it is the CPU shortcut. That's all I'm going to explain about CPU and ALU. As I have explained ALU, so uh, first I will define ALU and control unit. Then I will try to explain CPU. ALU, the arithmetic logic unit of the CPU performs all arithmetic and logic operations. Means arithmetic logic of the CPU performs all arithmetic and logical operations. Control unit. The control unit of CPU directs the com computer to carry out the instructions by the interfacing with ALU and me memory. The control unit of CPU directs the computer to carry out the instruction by the interfacing with ALU and memory. And CPU has two parts, ALU and control unit. Now I'm going to explain CPU. CPU means central processing unit. It is a small silicon chip housed on the motherboard that processes all commands and operations given to the computer. Means it processes all operations and instruction given to the computer. It receives a program instructions, decodes it, performs the required operation and then stores the output on this computer uh, computer memory means it decode it decodes the instruction and performs the required operation and stores them in the output of the computer memory and this uh, step is being repeated by it since a computer performance depends on the speed of processing by its upu means a computer depend on its processing of the cpu speed of the cpu Memo manufacturers begin looking for ways to increase the processing power of CPUs. Modern CPUs are multi-care that is contain multi multiple uh, com pro processors put together in a single unit just as doubling or tripling the number of construction. Workers at a building site would cut down the time taken for complete completion of work Increasing the number processor would allow large tasks given to the given to a CPU to be broken down into smaller tasks. Processed parallelly 
resulting in faster and more affectionate completion of tasks. Thank you. You may like my video. Thank you. I am Utkarsh of class 7 B and uh, I am going to, to tell about what is RAM. R full form of RAM is random access memory. Is a form of computer memory. It is used to store working data. The things that we are doing in the computer that is going on if we are playing a game then it is in the ram and if we just install the game and keep it in our computer or laptop it is not in the ram memory it goes to the internal storage and ma'am it is not a storage device any application if you will install in it goes to memory not to ram and when you start the program it goes to ram it is the fastest memory in the computer ram is used for multitasking ram memory is not stored every time in it when we shut down the computer the memory stored in ram is again gone to the computer memory so ma'am when we install something and we start doing work on it the the thing that we are doing the surfing the access thing random access memory the access thing is gone to ram and it is used for multitasking and it is not a storage device it does not store that means ram never gets gets full means ram never like uh, in storage in computer sometimes it get full so we have to delete something in ram there is nothing like that so ma'am uh, and when we are doing very much multitasking or very much work at a time the ram space if it is very large then it uh, frequently we can do the work but if the ram's memory is not like very much so the computer starts hanging so that's why we have to take a bigger memory of ram a bigger uh, storage of ram so this all for from me to the topic ram thank you ma'am good morning i shreya mishra a student of class 7 going to tell you something about the central processing unit or cpu it is a small what is cpu it is a small silicon chip housed on the motherboard that processes all the commands and the operations given to the computer it receives the program instruction decodes it performs the required operation and then stores the output on the computer memory the cycle keeps repeating it, which means that a cpu is made up of a small uh, made up of silicon <coughs> located at the bottom right corner of the motherboard and uh, whatever command is given to the computer it is going towards the cpu as if i am uh, typing a sentence or if i am performing a mathematical operation it is going to the cpu and cpu is processes uh, processing uh, processing it or decoding it or performing the required action, uh, operations and it gives back to the computer memory now this is being repeated as whatever we give a command it goes to the cpu and cpu processes it and gives back to us like this this cycle is being repeated all over again now let's come the input and output what is input input is the command which is going towards the cpu and output is the command which is going away from the cpu now the input components are the keyboard and the mouse and output components are the monitor and the printer now when we give a command it is going towards the cpu as an input and it goes to the control unit and what is this control unit control unit is 
directing the computer to carry out the instructions by interfacing with ADU and the memory. Uh, now it is the decision maker that where a sentence or calculation or any thing will go, any command will go. Such as if I am writing I am going to school or I am performing any mathematical operation or logical operation. Where it will go, either to the ALU or to the memory. It is a decision maker. Now, what happens if I am writing, I am going to school. Where does it go? It goes to the memory. Now, what memory is doing? Memory is translating the sentence given from the computer. Now, it is translating whatever is given. Like, this sentence is being translated in the memory. And then memory after translating gives back to the control unit and control unit gives it as the output either to the monitor or to the printer. Now what happens if the control unit gets a mathematical operation, a mathematical calculation or any logical calculation? It is going to the ALU. Now what ALU is? ALU is the short form of the arithmetical logical unit which is performing all arithmetic and logical operations. What is arithmetic operations? Arithmetic operations are these operations, these operations, mathematical operations. And what are logical operations? Logical operations are A is greater than B, A, A is less than B or A is equal to B. These all are the logical operations. Now they give a single answer, either yes, or no. Now since the computer's performance is dependent on the CPU, every command, everything is dependent on the CPU. Now if there would be no CPU, nothing, no command the computer can take. So, so that's why the, the CPU is playing a vital role in the computer. Now as if there was only one processor, what would happen that if we give it, we are giving so many commands at a time, the control <coughs> then the control there would be so much load on it. So that's why it cannot handle too much load and sometimes it can hang also. So that's why nowadays what is happening that <coughs> people are making dual core processors what are dual core processors dual core processors are the two processors in a single socket two processors in a single socket is known as the dual core processor so uh, just uh, imagine it as the making a building at a construction site with only one group will it happen faster no because there would be more load on them and if we uh, call two or three or 15 to 16 groups then it would be easier for them to make the building really efficiently and quickly now there is uh, the speed of the processor is also measured by its clock cycle in megahertz or in the gigahertz in known in short it's uh, megahertz is known as mhz and gigahertz in short is known as is known as ghz it measure, measures how many calculations can be done per second for instance a 3 ghz rated processor can do 3 billion calculations per second now look at the screenshot taken from the task manager. Now as you can see, it is showing that only 19% has been used and the speed is 1.15 GHZ. Is this fast a processor is? Now see how many sockets are there? Only one. And how many cores are there? Two. Now this shows that a dual core processor is having a speed of 1.15 GHZ. Now, if there would be 4 cores, it would be known as quad core processor. That's all for today. Thank you.